Right, rewirable consumer units. These things have been around since, well, since the, the advent of electricity or the discovery of it. The only way to protect a circuit was to protect it from overheating. So what they used were fuses or fuse wire, which is a little strip of wire thinner than the normal cable. The idea being that that creates a weak link and that that cable will melt before the actual cables in the installation melt. So they usually contained in something that looks a little like that. Tiny bit of wire between the two pins encased in there. This, this one's actually got a fused cartridge in it and I'll show you that a little later on. Usually housed in something like that. Um, this one's from the early 60s. You might be thinking, well, I've got rewirable fuses, but mine's newer than that. Or well, they're not rewirable, they're on trip switches, but they're a lot newer because it looks something like that, which is about 20 years younger than the first one. So let's have a look then. This one's 1960s. You've got the Bakelite front cover and the fuse cover, which they come off. Now, they do have a knockout on them, usually that's completely sealed, like you see with that one. But to get other protective devices to fit in, such as these trip switches, you can actually remove the front, which then allows the trip switch to sit in and the prongs to go through into the uh, buzz bar behind. So then you've got your main switch, your buzz bar and your neutral connections. So that's that's the switch there. Live straight down along the buzz bar and then off onto the circuits. You might see that there's a neutral wire or a black wire which would indicate neutral in old colours connected in to the top of that one. That's exactly how I found it. Both of them into a connector block because one of the cables had burnt out. And somebody in the wisdom thought, well, we'll put that in because obviously the cable's not thick enough. That wasn't the case. It had got the wrong size fuse in there and the, the circuit was overloaded. Um, needless to say, it's had a new consumer unit and uh, the additions on the other end of the circuit so sorted out. Anyway, back to the consumer unit. That's the back box. As you can see, made out of timber. And you might be thinking, well, mine's one of the newer ivory coloured ones. So, like that. But even with these, the rear of these, as you can see, is still wooden. So, yeah, they get hot, they catch fire. And then when they're protected by fuses, which are designed to get hot and melt, and it's not really an ideal situation, um, but they did it for cost effectiveness. Now, the issue with these things is, as I've come across with this one, that's a 30 amp fuse, or should be a 30 amp fuse, cartridge. And when you take the cover off it, you find that because nobody can actually get hold of the cartridge fuse, what they do is they shove a little bit of fuse wire across it. These fuse carriers aren't rated for that fuse wire to explode or melt or get hot because again they're made out of plastic and you might be thinking well my normal shoving fuse wires are plastic they've actually got a ceramic tube that the fuse wire goes through and that ceramic tube takes the impact of the fuse actually blowing so you've got a serious danger issue there and it's not the first time i've come across that i've found them wrapped up in tin foil and all sorts don't do it just don't do it so while we're on this style of consumer unit, they should have these, which are fitted on there, which protects all the metal parts from where you put your, your fuse cartridge in. Now, this one had been retrofitted with these trip switches. The idea behind those is, that's rated at 16 amp, this one's rated at 30 amp, it won't actually let that protective device go in. 
it'll let one of these, which is smaller, this one's rated at five amp, you can put a smaller one into a circuit that's designed larger, but not vice versa. But what people do is, oh, it keeps blowing that, that five amp fuse, we'll take that off, and then we'll shove a bigger device in with no no actual shield on it, which then leaves all the metal work exposed. Again, another no-no. So these things, people say, oh, well, I've had it upgraded to trip switches. Well, this is only an electronic fuse. It's not designed to protect against electric shock. The only thing this is designed for is the same thing that the fuses are designed for, which is overload. And all that's to do is to stop them cables melting and protect against fire. It's not there to protect against human life. And that's what an RCD is for, which is that unit there with the, uh, with the yellow test button on it. And I'll come into those on another video. But while we're on the subject of these, if you do need to replace the fuse, only ever replace it with the correct rating and the correct size for the circuit it is. And if your fuse does blow, switch the switch off before you put the fuse in or pull the fuse out. The reason being is arcing. If you connect that like that, it's going to flash an arc across there. If there's still a fault on the circuit and you push that in, it's going to bang and it's straight in your face. I don't know if you can see in there the witness marks where these have been pushed in and pulled out when they're live. I think that, that one there is probably the best one to show you. If you can see that where it's all arced, that creates a, a carbon buildup. So rather than it being clean brass and having a really good connection, if there's a load of carbon built up on that, it'll create a loose connection, which over time will generate a lot of heat. And again, in one of these style fuse boards, where they made of timber, not an ideal thing. So yeah, if ever you're changing your, your fuses or you need to change your fuse, make sure you switch the switch off before you push it in or pull it out. Till next time. <laughs>